Welcome to your St. John Narana midweek message for this week. Last week, we began talking about our minds. Jesus said, again, that the truth will make us free. But we need to learn what is the truth. And that can take some work. It can take some attention and intention. The fact is, we don't just naturally understand how our minds work. Most of the time, we just go along for the ride, and we assume that all is well. But sometimes, our minds let us down. Sometimes, we do things that are surprising or even bizarre to ourselves. Sometimes, we say hurtful things, and we don't know why. We may even do things that we can't adequately explain. Why did I do that? So what's up with that? Well, our minds work pretty well for the most part, but like any very complex system with complica complicated procedures, there can be problems. Like a car, a human mind is very intricate. In fact, far more intricate, more complex than any car or any piece of human machinery. It is one of the most complex things in the universe that we know of. But our minds are also very robust. They work amazingly well. Our cars and our minds and all things that are similarly complex need maintenance. Nothing complex runs forever without some maintenance, some attention. If we neglect maintaining our cars, well, they break down. Tires will go flat. Eventually, oil stops lubricating at all. But before any of that, they simply run out of gas and end up on the side of the road dead. Buildings, too, require maintenance. From time to time, they need renovations, like the windows behind me. Things need attention. Things break down. Our minds may well contain old thought patterns that no longer serve us. Something that worked well for us as little children may have worn out its usefulness. Paul wrote, when I was a child, I thought like a child. When I became an adult, I put away childish things. There are things that we learned at a very early age that can cause us much pain and suffering as adults. Humans, of course, are not and could not be a simple, easily understood system. We are indeed fearfully, wonderfully made. We have different facets. We have different parts, not just different parts like hands and feet and heart and organs, but different parts of our minds as well. As we grow up, we go through this process of stumbling and stubbing our toes physically and in other ways. We run into coffee tables and we run into the needs and desires and expectations of other people. Eventually, we run into the needs and desires and expectations of ourselves as well. If we slow down in our everyday lives and pay close attention, it is possible to see that there is definitely more than one voice in our minds. I think we have all found ourselves having debates with ourselves. Should I call? No, it's too soon. I really should call. I don't know. I, sh I should wait till tomorrow to call. Uh, no, that's too late. I probably should call right now. Oh, no, they'll think that I'm nagging. Maybe I should wait till next week. Does that sound familiar? We can easily have two or even more internal thoughts in our own mind at the same time that conflict. Our minds do this all the time. We second guess ourselves. We have internal debates, even arguments. We say things like, 
I shouldn't have done that. That was really silly. Or even, oh, that was so stupid. Why did I say that? I can't believe I said that. I'm stupid. Perhaps it would be helpful to ask ourselves then, who said that? Who is it that is smart enough to know how stupid we are? And if both of those thoughts are in our own mind, then which voice do we identify with? Are we the one passing judgment on the stupid thought? Or are we the one who is thinking stupid thoughts? Are we smart enough to know how stupid we can be? Are we stupid enough to know that we should be smarter? When we're stuck in these kinds of loops of self-judgment, it can be very hard to untangle it. Next week, we'll take a closer look at how those voices work and where they might come from. In the meantime, pay attention to the voices that you hear in your mind, questioning your actions. If you find yourself saying something like that, Saying something that questions what you've done. Just ask, who said that? That was me. But was that me? Do I identify with that thought? Is that an accurate thought? Am I really stupid? Or did I say something that was really stupid? If so, how do I know? Think about it. Make some notes if you like. Next week, We'll take another look at this from a maybe a different angle.